Hey guys, Bitter Steel here, back with another video for Hearts of Iron 4. And today, as requested by the community poll, we will be playing as the German Reich. That's right, Germany, baby. And we will not just be playing the regular old Germany game, no. We will be forming the European Union as Germany. That's right, we will make Mama Merkel proud. Now, I will be deviating from my usual approach to the game for this one. I've had a pretty rough week and I just want to take my frustration out on the game. And to do that, I've lifted one. One of the restrictions I usually place on myself and that means I am going to cheese the game mechanics a little bit and by a little bit I mean extensively. Don't worry I'm not gonna turn this into some sort of exploit channel I I just want to vent some frustration and I I had a lot of fun when I first did this so I, I thought it might be enjoyable to watch so let's hop in. Germany 1936 Iron Man mode on so you know I'm not cheating and historical AI focuses on Let's roll. Now, if you like these videos, leave a like and consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel a lot. Also, hit me up in those comments. Hit me with your questions, your suggestions, and I do read most of the comments. That said, we also have a very nice active Discord community. I'll leave the link to the server in the description below. Anyway, enough rambling. On to the video. Ah. Now, bear with me. Setup here might take a while. This is rather micro intensive. Let's start out with. With the Navy. All right, we've got uh, Dunnets here on the submarines and Raider here on the surface fleets. Erich, Erich, Erich. Uh, I'll use good old Erich here for naval invasion support on the Eastern North Sea. Well, these three tiles here. North Sea, Eastern North Sea, English Channel and the submarine fleet convoy raids in exactly the same tiles. Good. I'll revisit the Navy later. Then Air Force. Uh, I'll just group everybody up here in Schleswig-Holstein. That's the largest airport I have. They can go there. I'll organize them in a bit. And now the big one, the military. This will require quite a bit of maneuvering. Right. We have 24 regular infantry divisions and six others. I'll take four of these infantry divisions and move them over to the other army. That gives us 10 units. 10 units is the exact number of divisions we can send across in naval invasions early game since we start with the tech. Can you see where I'm going with this? Well, <laughs> stay tuned. It's going to get spicy. Now, key in fighting a... Um, well, now key in fighting a Bewegungskrieg or a war of mobility is speed. So we will take all of the units that are not motorized or armor and switch them over to the motorized infantry template. Don't worry, I know it says we have absolutely no motorized in reserve. It doesn't actually matter. For some reason, these units will still move at the same speed as a fully equipped motorized division despite having no trucks. So I just, I imagine those troops are just really good runners and we'll start planning a few invasions we'll take one armor division and three trucks launching from the port beneath hamburg and they will hit dieppe le havre amiens and that tile beneath calais that's a good spread to land in northern france and that should be enough to take out the french really quickly france falls usually uh, when these northern victory points fall and it's all planes so our speedy units can rush through that no sweat. Yeah, that disjointed government really cripples France early game. Much to our benefit. Then we have more tanks. Take another armor division with two trucks and we will launch a naval invasion from the same port and we will hit the tile next to London. They usually don't garrison this unless you give them warning, which we will not do. Don't worry about it. You'll see what we'll do. We are going to catch the AI with their pants down and then we'll take the last three units. So another armor division and three motorized naval invasion and we'll hit the tile beneath hull. You could hit hull, but I have noticed that this is usually where they have some troops that are in transit from the north heading down or are just sitting on the port. So I, I prefer to land on this tile and use my speed to zip across to Liverpool or zip down to Norwich. And the armor can be commanded by our good friend, Guderian. No wait, that's von Manstein. This is Guderian. That leaves us with 20 infantry divisions. We'll take a few of these like four, split them off into another army and park them on the Czech 
border. Yes, I do know that that's not enough to man the check border. We'll revisit that. That leaves us with 16 units. And since we know that speed and equipment are not directly related, we'll change these out into motorized as well. And we'll park them on the tile with the port. They will be sent across as soon as we take a port in England. Well, assuming we cannot capitulate them with we already land. Some good micro is key here. And they can be commanded by pretty much whoever, really. Good old Rommel will do. At least I know he won't abandon me later on. And that leaves an army on the Czech border to be commanded by... Hmm, Kesselring. He's a really good defensive general and I know he will not stab me in the back later. Now, to reinforce the units on the Czech border, we will simply train a truckload of cavalry divisions. Yes, I know that these are terrible, and I know that we will never be able to produce all of these. Doesn't matter. As soon as you can deploy one, keep spamming them out. They will be under-equipped, under-trained, and it doesn't matter. Like, the Czech AI isn't all that interested in pushing out. They'd rather just sit on their front line. So with that setup done, let's look at the production. Ooh, we need a lot of guns and we need a lot of motorized. I'm not going to touch anything except add some motorized. I do want some trucks. Plus, they will be useful later on when we transition into actual divisions. And guns. We need a lot of guns for what we're about to do. The rest we'll leave as is, except for tactical bombers. I don't really like using tactical bombers. I'll put that one on artillery. Naval production. Uh, let's just cut these down to one ship each. Maximize the dockyards on every one. And I just like to spread these out over the fleets we already have. You can do that manually as they're deployed, but at least this way I don't forget about it. Three weeks later. There, we'll just squeeze out as many of these as possible. Though, don't rely on um, naval superiority against the UK. Yes, we'll catch them with their pants down, but they still have a lot of ships. Don't worry about it. We'll fix it. You'll see. As for construction, we will be building a few military factories, one in Westfalen, one in the Rhineland, one in Württemberg, and where else, where else? Eh, just put one here in Wolseland. This will do for now. We'll revisit construction at a later point. The initial stages are set. Research, just the basics really. Industry, construction, research, and infantry equipment. Germany starts with a lot of research slots and research really isn't too difficult. I won't be repeating what I'm doing uh, except for some key things. The basics are always the same. Keep your industry up to date, keep your engineering up to date, and then just research what you think your army will need, which is usually infantry equipment. Keep that up to date. As Germany, armor, obviously, but I'll tell you when. And well, planes, you do have a large military production. Why not make some planes? Plus, all these research slots, might as well. Decisions, we will not be bothering with decisions just yet. Trade, could do some trade, not with Sweden though, but with the Siamese. And finally, national focuses. We will in fact not be picking a national focus just yet. No, we will set speed to max and keep this going until we have 10, one, zero, 10 political power. Let's go. Well, because we gained so much, it stopped at 12, but yeah, okay, that's fine. We'll go into Yugoslavia. Can you feel what I'm doing yet? Can you? And we'll improve their relations up to plus 14, 16, more or less. And keep the game running. Uh, 14 will do. And now we will stop improving our relations. And we'll just sit on our political power until we have 50 political power. Yes, I'm sure some of you have already figured it out, but just keep watching. We are about to do something beautiful and broken, and I love it. I hate it, but I love it. There, 50 political power. Let's pan over to the United States of America and justify a war goal. What this is going to do is, voila, spike world tension like crazy and that has some very good benefits for us and we can take advantage of those benefits as soon as we get rid of our faction the axis is no longer required bye bye what does this allow us to do very simple it will allow us to create a faction with yugoslavia now i know what it says don't worry about it the game needs to update so i need to let about a day pass there game updated yugoslavia is very very willing to enter into a faction with the German Reich. 
which we will obviously do. There we go, the creation of Axis 2. And Yugoslavia has joined our faction. Great. Meanwhile, just leave the game to run. Don't forget to spam out these cavalry divisions. We'll need roughly 15-ish of them on the front lines. And this is the event we are looking for. Yugoslavia is hard-coded to have one of two outcomes if they join a faction with Germany before doing certain focuses. Option one is the one you're seeing here. There will be a coup. King Michael will take over. I believe it's Michael? What king is this actually? Oh, Peter. So yeah, Peter II here, this little boy, will take over and uh, all previous agreements made with Germany will be considered null and void. Fortunately, that gives us an immediate Free war goal on Yugoslavia. Fantastic. Let's click that. As you can see, Yugoslavia is automatically guaranteed by the French because that's how the game starts. Same with Czechs and the Romanians. And because world tension is that high, uh, the UK joins in on the fun as well. As a result, once we declare, all of these will join the Allies. Which is perfect, because that's just what we want. An easy way to defeat all those nations in one fell swoop. Squeeze a few more of these cavalry out. I'm a few short, but not that many. Now, do note there is a second outcome. It's less likely, but it's still there in that second outcome. There will not be a coup, you will not get a free war goal, but instead Yugoslavia will be split down the middle as two factions wage a brutal civil war over who gets to be the real Yugoslavia. That's not the outcome you want, but it's early enough in the game that you can still restart and aim for this event. Now, what are we going to do? It's simple, we are going to declare on the Allies. Or rather, Yugoslavia, but not yet. Let's review our preparations. Our naval invasions are ready to go. Everybody's in position. Our navies are in position as well. Naval invasion support could set these to convoy escort, but we can switch to that after the troops have landed. Though realistically, we will not be dominating the seas here. The Royal Navy is um, simply too large, but it might help getting a few more supplies in. But I like to switch to that later on to conserve fuel. We don't have that much fuel. Then there is the Czech border. Could use a few more of these cavalry divisions, so we'll squeeze out as many as we can in the few minutes after the declaration. But the Czechs shouldn't be too much of a threat. They prefer to sit on their fort line. And that leaves the border with France wide, wide open. And that's perfectly fine. The French will start pouring into Germany relatively slowly. And as a result, they will completely forget to defend their country. They will commit most of their army to the offensive. Plus, we can also get Italy in on this. In a bit, once we declare, the Italians will be all too happy to join our faction. Not the fight, but the faction. And that forces France to keep some troops on the Alpine border as well. So all in all, we are going to backdoor France and catch them with their pants down. They will not know what hit them. Ooh, I have free factories. Should probably use them for something. Do note that this is a bit, I wouldn't say RNG heavy, but you could get extremely unlucky. Generally, this is fairly easy. We've caught the AI with their pants down. These naval invasions will go off without a hitch because the enemy fleets are not in position and not prepared. However, a few things to note. The UK. Now, the UK usually doesn't keep a lot of troops on the home islands and they will immediately start shuffling troops into France to assist with their invasion of us because the French will join the Allies. Uh, same for these Balkan countries. But we can simply drive around the UK army, more or less. UK usually isn't too difficult. The problem tends to be France. Yes, the French commit most of their troops to the invasion of Germany and to the defense of the Alps, because we will be inviting the Italians. Let me click that button here. Oh, we can get Horthian as well. Why would we get Horthian? That's just weird. Anyway, um, while the French army is mostly occupied by the invasion and the Italian garrisons, they can still have some troops lingering up here in the north. Not only that, you may run into stray British troops that have just made their crossing and are headed to the front. Usually, that would not be much of a problem. However, as you can see, 
We are staging an invasion with mostly under-equipped, under-supplied and under-strength motorized divisions. These guys are not equipped to deal with a fight. All they're supposed to do is drive from victory point to victory point. Now the tanks, they might be able to take a fight or two, but we are here for speed. We need to capture these victory points before the French army reacts. So that said, yes, you might need to restart once or twice. You can be unlucky. Let's see how unlucky we are. You can see here UK, France, Czechoslovakia, Romania. They will all join the Allies. It's fine. We also will not be picking a national focus just yet. We need quite a bit more of that delicious political power. We have plans. Plans within plans. And the Italians are more than willing to join our faction. But don't count on them to do any fighting. They're here to distract the French. I think we've squeezed out enough cavalry divisions as well. I'm just going to let these squeeze out. No, no, maybe these two. I'll squeeze these two out and that's it. We will have to make do with what we have. Well, as the troops get closer, we get a nice view. They have troops in Dunkirk and I assume a division on Le Havre. That's usually where they have some troops. It should be okay as long as we don't run into any stray UK divisions, but we'll see. We'll keep the speed down and do what we can. Naval invasion in the UK is being contested. That is unfortunate. This is usually empty. So I'm going to assume this was a division headed to the French front. Fortunately, we have landed to the north near Hull. And let's rush there. Head to Norwich and support. I fear I may need to commit the reserves. I'll commit half to England. If we can take a port, it's not looking uh, favorable. And I'll commit the other half to France. Ideally, the reserves wouldn't even be needed, but this is turning out to be anything but an ideal situation. Okay, good. This division is leaving the tile. We are going to let them. This is just extremely unfortunate. I am afraid our southern landing in the UK has been thwarted and that could mess up the entire run. To mention this uh, French division refusing to move, much to my displeasure. Great, that's Paris taken. A few more victory points and France should fall. There we go, the French have fallen. No, Germany will conquer all. Now the problem will be to secure England itself. As you can see, our troops are failing to land near London due to meeting some unfortunate opposition in the area. Perhaps with our speed we can take the port at Norwich, though it is looking rather unlikely. Well, at least we made the landing. Unfortunately, like I said, there is always an element of, well, luck involved. And we are, well, I can only describe this as extremely unlucky. I've done this many, many times as test runs. And I've never had this many trouble defeating both of these nations. We were just extremely unlucky with the positioning of allied divisions. Now to defeat the UK, again, we we just drive to their victory points, try to bypass the army wherever we can. The problem is it's already taking much, much longer than it should. We should have defeated the UK like 14 days ago. The slightest delay will ruin this, simply because we have no fighting potential. Our units are incredibly incredibly weak.
there with Hull taken, that should be the UK capitulating now. Yep, the United Kingdom is ready to give up. And that ends this dreadful, dreadful conflict. Now, as you see, we had a lot of trouble with this but that was an incredibly incredibly unlucky run and even so we managed to defeat the entire allies within a matter of days well weeks i've managed to do this usually within two weeks took a little longer this time but that's fine we are perfectly positioned to continue as far as france is concerned we will simply take all states as far as czechoslovakia is concerned we will also take all states as far as the united kingdom is concerned we will be puppeting these where is the button there we will puppet the united kingdom because i am very interested in their fleet now as far as the raj and malaya are concerned yes we could puppet them but that would just mean we lose them a little bit later to the axis. That is to say, when we finally do decide to go the non-aligned path and we oppose Mr. Hilter, they will break off and stay with the original country. On the whole, that doesn't really matter too much, so we can simply satellite them or we just leave them alone to be democratic. I'm going to satellite them this time simply because I don't want them to get involved and possibly turn into a major like the Raj tends to do when we go for the Benelux. So there we go, March 16th, 1936 and Germany has conquered most of Western Europe. The Spanish Civil War hasn't even fired. What are we going to do next? Well, I am going to send a truckload of convoys to the United Kingdom. Let's see, how many would these be? 700, 1,100. This is a 770 autonomy reduction. We need 750 to get them to be annexed, so that will do. We'll not pick a focus until we have 300 political power. That way we can integrate the British instantly. And meanwhile, we wait. We will still be going for the low countries and Italy. Now, as far as the army is concerned, we have no more need for this mass of motorized. We can simply turn them back into regular infantry and uh, park them somewhere in a reasonable position. I'll hold on to the smaller army under Guderian. They can remain as they are. The others will simply exercise and get some experience back. Like I said, no focuses just yet until we have 300 political power. How's the navy looking? Ooh, yeah, most of our navy is now at the bottom of the channel, but that is perfectly acceptable because we will simply be borrowing someone else's navy. Now as you can see here we are paying for those MIFO bills. It's unfortunate but these don't really take that long and uh, I'd say our economy is booming after we integrate the UK. We do have quite a bit of Europe at our disposal but they might be rowdy so I suggest setting the garrisons to the highest priority. Oh and uh, before we forget we might want to cancel that justification on the Americas. We are not going for the United States just yet. Seeing as we've taken quite a few tanks from the French, I believe, I've converted a few of my motorized divisions under Guderian into light tank divisions. These aren't great, but they will do for our subduing of the low countries. We'll get rid of everything later on. And again, for industry, whatever branch you pick, not that relevant. I'm just a huge fan of Dispersed. MIFO builds have worn off. Our economy is going to slowly start recovering. I don't think we need to build any civilians. We could. I don't think we have to. So I will start building a few military factories. And remember, build in Eastern Germany and maybe in France or the United Kingdom. But uh, these two are occupied and not core territory yet. So for now, construct in Eastern Germany. No, wait, Western Germany. The East's on that side. So construct in Western Germany. There we go, 300 political power. Now we can click the button and integrate the British Empire. And with that, not only is that an enormous territorial expansion, just, just look at the size of this chunker. We now also have access to the fleet. That's right, the entire Royal Navy 
at our disposal. The High Seas Fleet is rebuilt. We can finally start taking some focuses while we wait for political power to integrate the load countries. Um, so avoid any of these. We are not going Rhineland. We will be going oppose Mr. Hilter later on. But for now, while we still need to gobble up the Italians and the low countries, we will stick with the left side of our focus tree. So army innovations treaty with the USSR. These two would be my first pick after which we move into the industry. Focuses don't really matter that much. So I will leave the choice to you, though I would recommend getting treaty with the USSR early so we can start pumping out those medium tanks. And I will tell you when it's time to oppose Mr. Hilter. We've also got a little bit of army XP, might as well use some of it. I will use five of it to add one infantry battalion to the standard Infanterie Division. This will just bring it up to 20 combat with just an infantry block with some supporter companies. I will add maybe anti-air to this later on. These are our frontline units. They will just stand there and take the hits. We will focus as a good Germany player should on tanks. We will be building medium tanks as soon as we can research them. The rest of my experience will be put to good use later on, probably expanding one of these cavalry divisions to serve as, well, military police to keep these guys uh, under control because using infantry divisions is pretty costly. And later on, of course, to start popping out some excellent tank divisions. As you can see, the standard armor division is not exactly um, up to snuff, let's say. Oh look, Spain decided to actually do its thing eventually. Bit late to the party there, Spain. Bit late. Army innovations into treaty with USSR. As you can see here, a two year ahead of time bonus for medium tanks. That's great. Sooner we can pump those out to better. Well, we're sitting on quite a bit of political power. I could keep gathering a little bit more and switch into war economy. I think I'll do that first. The low countries can wait. Greece is invading Albania. Uh, okay. That's just gonna lead to Greece getting gobbled up by Italy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It most definitely is. Oh, Greece, what have you done? Right, first batch of 150 PP into war economy, the best economy. And now we are going to save up for our justifications on the low countries. I will be eating the Dutch and the Belgians at the same time. And we'll just leave Luxembourg for after. Assuming we have time to declare on them in the same fight. If not, we'll eat them on their own. Doesn't really matter. While I'm here, might as well make an intelligence agency. Doesn't matter too much, but it's fun to play around with. At least I like it. Also going to research military police because we are occupying quite a bit of land. And um, it's costing us a lot of equipment and they're not all too happy to have us. So we have to fix that. All right, we have that treaty with the USSR done. On historical, they should always accept. So that's a nice bonus. Good head for army innovations too, but there's not that much value there just yet. I prefer to divert into the four year plan, but I leave those choices up to you. It doesn't really matter too much. So I will not be telling you to pick a focus. You pick whatever. My recommendations are on the industry up to the extra research slot, but you do you. It doesn't really matter. We're pretty strong as it is. I'll get back to you when it's time to oppose Mr. Hilter. Time to get those medium tanks, boys. All right, this should be enough political power to do what we want to do. So we justify on the Belgians, any state will do. And we justify on the Dutch, again, any state will do. Cancel our justification on the Belgians and start it back up there. That should have both justifications finish around the same time. We can gobble both of those up simultaneously. Also gonna make some toad anti-air. Don't need too much of it, but it's nice to have. Now, in preparation for our inevitable fight with the Allies, these two democratic countries will join what's left of the Allies. We need to draw some battle lines, seeing as Romania is still in the Allies, as is Yugoslavia. We need to plan for an invasion of those countries as well. Now, the north here is pretty well accessible, so we could try and quickly push out from here. Alternatively, we can set a fallback line somewhere in the mid of Czechia and use this to bottle up their troops and then quickly rush into those respective countries. Choice is yours. We'll see what we do. I haven't really decided yet. I think I might just go for the classic uh, try and get them at the border, but I'll leave a fallback line here just in case that doesn't quite work. 
and we have more political power. I like hiring Hal Hjalmar, Hjalmar Schacht, the captain of industry here. I mean, it's, it's a nice bonus and he's really cheap. And that's the Greeks gone. I knew that was going to happen. Unfortunate Greeks, unfortunate. There we go. We have our medium tanks, the Panzer III. And I am going to go ahead of time and head straight into the Panzer IV. We have enough research slots. So I'm not losing much and we'll get a, an extra research slot later on as well. So I think, personally, it's worth force researching this this far ahead of time. Especially with the 100% bonus. If I'm wrong, tell me. But I just really like having good tanks. Speaking of good tanks, we'll also start producing these in massive, massive quantities. We will need a lot of tanks. Yeah, the Romanian army is all at this border here. So I'm going to pull these guys back to this little fallback line and try and bait them into my country. It's going to be easier than trying to fight our way through this narrow front. Also, don't forget you have a border with Canada. Canada is in the Allies, so put some troops there. Maybe consider upgrading the naval base and the infrastructure if you're going to push out from here. It's an easy way to get Canada, but you mustn't neglect the infrastructure and port. Now we have access to military police. I'm going to go into this cavalry brigade that we inherited from the UK. Swap out the recon for military police and make the division a teeny tiny bit larger. We don't have that much military experience, but the larger the garrison template, the better. And we'll use these to keep the locals in check. Resistance should be under control by now. Yep, we can spend some more political power. Either we turn to the industry or we turn to the army. Uh, we are building quite a few military factories, so I think that's going to be helpful. Next step will be to get Erwin Rommel here, the armor genius, but that can wait. Whenever you find yourself with these bonuses, like I have for my land doctrine here, 100% bonus from, I believe, our first army focus. Where was it? Uh, yes, army innovations. Uh, try and use it whenever you're caught up with industry. And as for industry, we also have a few bonuses here. Could use it to go well ahead of time for this first three. It's probably worth it. Or you can pick anything else you like, really. I'm gonna go ahead of time here. 20 minutes later. There we go. Our justification on Belgium and the Netherlands is complete. We will now simply declare. They will join what's left of the Allies. That's perfectly fine. We can get them in one fell swoop. And we'll justify on Luxembourg as well. 125 days. I'm going to let some time tick by, see if they join the Axis. Yeah, they've joined the Allies, I mean. Looks like Romania is the leader of the Allies. Uh, okay, okay, fine, fine. Now we justify on Luxembourg. There, much quicker that way since we are at war with a major. And a faction leader is considered a major. So congratulations, Romania. You are a major power in the world. So I've set a fallback line here along the center of Czechoslovakia and the fort line or the former fort line I'm going to let the Romanians come to me because this is an incredibly bad front line to fight over so just let them come to us we'll deal with their army later right now I'm just going to overrun the Belgians and the Netherlands army should be fine for that and that's the Netherlands gone power of armor and motorized is incredible isn't it now we just knock out the Belgians Romania is coming to us as expected we're not going to get the Italians involved or anyone else, really. And that's the Belgians knocked out. Good, good, these troops. I'll move the infantry over to Canada. They might serve some purpose there. Just fight them a little bit, push them around a little. Doesn't really matter. Just get the Canadians into the war, or rather into the peace deal. And we'll handle things from there. Meanwhile, I'll put my armor here and we'll prepare to, uh, well, encircle Romania. It's not great to push through here, so I'll let them come to me a little bit more. Oh, and uh, Luxembourg. Don't forget about Luxembourg. All right, justification on Luxembourg's done. We'll simply declare. Drive our army in there. Rip. They're gone. Good. Now divert the armor and motorized and get ready to deal with Romania. Now I could invite Italy and they would fight Yugoslavia. That would pull the Yugoslavs into the eventual peace deal, but I don't want to give Italy too much. I will be taking out Italy eventually. All right, most of the Romanian army has arrived. Let's see if we can start cutting them to ribbons. Just a few quick little encirclements, destroy the army, push south. Meanwhile, how are we doing here? 
Right, These units are getting into position, should be able to start grinding against the Canadians. Shouldn't matter too much, the Canadian army is not exactly known for its glorious strength. In game that is, I, I know I know of historical exploits of the Canadian army and they are quite formidable. At any rate, let's get to these Romanians, let's slice them up real good. Like our armor divisions really aren't great, but they're just fine for dealing with these early game units. That's a nice encirclement of the Romanian army. Let's quickly push south, see how far we can get. Oh, and in all this excitement, I forgot political power. Once again, let's just hire Erwin Rommel here. I just encircled all the Romanian units. Oh, Romania. Romania. You no, know, I almost feel bad for you, you know that? I almost feel bad for you. And yes, I know I could just leave these units to starve here and I might even get their equipment. I just don't want to deal with it. I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to advance into Romania, see if I can't sneak a little bit of occupation of the Yugoslavs and that might uh, allow me to integrate them into the peace deal as well. Ah, speed. Glorious speed. Yes, we've taken some Yugoslav land. That'll do. That'll do to get them into the peace deal. And Romania is going to fall any minute now due to our glorious speed. Yugoslavia should be involved. Let's check out Canada. Yeah, Canada is definitely going to be involved. So I'd say we are about to have a very nice peace deal. Actually, while I'm here, I might as well just get the Hungarians in as well. Mix for nice borders. Yes, I'm going to halt my tanks. All right, that allows me to get the Hungarians in. Just gonna get the infantry into position. We can keep the uh, Romanian front under control. Now I'll reposition the tanks to quickly storm into Hungary. Bye bye, Hungary. But Turkey wants Hatay. What do I care about Hatay? I'll just, I'll, they, I'll just give him Hatay, I don't care. Oh, well, that's the Hungarians out of the picture. I feel like I'm creating an incredible mess. But it's just so much fun. It's too fun not to create this mess. There we go. That's our peace deal. And look at the things we can take. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Let's see here. Kingdom of Hungary. I don't think this can become a core, but I can't really puppets because well puppets will side with the wrong germany so take all states we will simply have to annex everything there we go look at that yes i know i could have eaten poland as well but i thought i was already pushing it i think i think this is fairly reasonable all right next stage of our operation will be to um remove the italians bye bye italy and we'll justify on them as well for Pretty much any province. Uh, we'll just put up some front lines. Shouldn't be too difficult. And we'll prepare to naval invade them as well. And I like to do so from Toulon and hit them somewhere around the center. Cut the country in half, push up the boot, down the boots, and just sweep them aside. Now we do have quite a bit of army experience. I'm going to make the initial changes to our tank templates. Now I could start converting this into a true tank template but let's face it it's it's just a garbage division and adding mediums to this and adding motorized to this is just going to take forever so what i like to do instead is start making changes to the motorized division this has quite a bit of motorized in it already which will form the core isn't the right word but this will help fill out any armor division I'm going to start adding armored battalions to this I'm going to start adding my medium tanks more political power, might as well spend this on the infantry experts. We are going to be using them. Now, Now, one thing I forgot to mention, when making political power purchases, pretty important. Yes, I know we have access to two silent workhorses and a pretty large variety of good advisors. Unfortunately, these good advisors, such as Martin Bormann here or Mr. Himmler, will leave us when we do oppose Hilter. So, we don't want them. That will be a waste of political power if we got them. I've recruited another army here. Standard infantry. I'm gonna force deploy them. They don't need to be that experienced. Any general will do. Vitizban. Just uh, park them here on the Greek-Albanian border. Wouldn't want the Italians to, uh, you know, have free reign of the area. Might end up going poorly for us. And more political power. At this point, just spend it as you see fit. There's really nothing you can do wrong here. 
Some good choices are Guderian here, the Blitzkrieg Theorist, or just the Chief of Army. Anything goes, really. Pick whatever you like. Just avoid picking any of the, well, the obvious problems like Mr. Himmler or Mr. Bormann here. Anyone who's in the, um, well, the swastika party. I'll just go with Guderian. I'm not gonna keep telling you what to spend your political power on. You should feel your way through this. It's not that important anymore. Already, our justification on Italy is done. Let's carve them up. Oh, Italy. Never stood a chance, did you? Now, for Italy, I don't expect this to take too long, so I'm going to pick a short focus. Naval rearmament, 35 days. After we've dealt with Italy, we will finally be changing it to something a little more democratic. And we've landed. Shouldn't be too much trouble. Just quickly take as many victory points as we can aggressively. Oh, we've even managed to encircle 10 of their divisions with our naval landings. He's so incompetent, Mussolini. All right, everybody's landed. Let's reorganize into something that makes a little bit more sense. And let's go. Hmm. I was going to say the Italians are incompetent, but I have uh, appear to have just abandoned taking Palermo. My bad. My bad. There we go. That's the Italians out. And just take everything done. That didn't even take that long. 34 days. Not bad. Not bad. And with that, we control most of Europe. Now, I realize I could have gotten Bulgaria in in the same way and even Poland. But honestly, I didn't want to. It's getting meme enough as it is let's just let's just keep things rolling finish this focus and finally start opposing mr hilder and one of the things i like to do is completely disbanding the military why well we don't need that many soldiers we all get event troops and um, i know where the front lines are going to be and i'll tell you this the front lines are not going to be favorable to our adversary mr mustache man all right in 20 days we will fire off oppose mr mustache man which is fine now there's one more trick up my sleeve that i want to show you guys we are going to send some lend lease and what are we going to do here we're going to select every bit of equipment in our inventory just everything this is an ungodly amount of clicking yes this is tedious but it's so powerful i still don't understand why they haven't fixed this yet so you just cram everything here it's going to give us a very very long list we're gonna click everything here on once i wish there was just a way to duplicate this because this is going to be an incredible amount of tedious clicking now it's not required it's not required at all it just makes the upcoming civil war so much easier i did say that i was going to break my own rules against cheese and by god dan you have given me the tools to cheese so i will cheese but the cheese, one must suffer. One eternity later. All right, that's starting to give me carpal tunnel, but let's keep going. What we're going to do now is just type whatever number in there, a, an extremely large number like that, and it will default to the absolute maximum the game can uh, comprehend. And we'll do that for every piece of equipment. I'm doing this for China now, but this works just as well with Spain. I don't know about Japan because there's no land connection to Japan and it would require boats. So I'd not risk it. I haven't tested it. Anyway, what we're going to do is send the maximum amount of equipment that the game understands to China. Or at least the game thinks we are. 2,000 years later. No joke, my wrist is actually in pain right now. Oh my god, this is so painful and tedious, but it's also so good. That's why I suffer through it. There, that's done. Now what we're going to do is click send. Now what does this do? It will start stockpiling that equipment. Back to China. It will start stockpiling all that equipment up here in this lend lease to China. Ready to send within 30 days. Fortunately, it will take less than 30 days to finish this focus and start our little civil war. And everyone knows that when a civil war fires, stockpiles of equipment and troops in the field get split between the factions. And in this case, it would be around 50-50. However, it does not take into account this stockpile. It doesn't cut the lend lease in half or cancel the lend lease. It doesn't take the lend lease into account at all, which means um, 
Hell, as soon as that Civil War fires, we cancel the lend lease and all that equipment flows back into our coffers. We get everything and the Mustache Man gets nothing. I told you I was going to cheese it and that's exactly what I'm going to do. There we go. The Wehrmacht officers challenge Hilter. Perch this scum from the earth. That's what our front lines look like. I'd say we're in a pretty good position. The event spawn troops are here as well. So just give them a general, plop them on the front line and order an attack, any attack. And it can be led by... Ooh, we lost quite a few generals. Uh, Kesselring, you have served us well in the past. Might as well get some army logistics here. Now, as for focuses, we cannot continue on to the new state until we are at peace. It's fine, we can wait. Meanwhile, just pick whatever, really. Maybe the war economy here. Next up, recruit and deploy. Ooh, let's see. That lend lease to China departs in 10 days. That means it's somewhere in a FedEx shipping office. Let's reclaim that and um, negotiate the lend lease. Clear all. There we go. And it's gone. It's not in our stockpiles yet, but don't worry. It will. As soon as we unpause, let a day take by. Blah, blah. Bunch of events. And there are equipment. Perfect. Start deploying some divisions. We will need troops in the field. As many as we can uh, afford. Might as well put up an air force. Green air tends to be very helpful. Now I am recruiting a couple of tank divisions here, as you can see. Now these are not vital to victory. When we plop them out, sure, they're overrun whatever event troops they already have. It's fine, perfect. But um, they don't have enough troops to fill the front lines as it is. They are slowly going to start shifting troops away from this front to head to Czechia and down into the rest of our territory, all the while giving us openings to take them out. Another fun thing we can do now is uh, create a faction with the Austrians. I have no idea why they're suddenly so keen. They wouldn't do that before, but now that we are also non-aligned, they're more than happy to. Uh, let's invite them to Axis 3. Axis reloaded. Hurrah, the Austrians have accepted, and in a few days, they should get that referendum event. Any minute now. Any minute. Minute now. There we go, the Austrian referendum. Always pick the option that allows the Austrians to go for a referendum. Mm, the bottom option is terrible, the top option fires referendum with I believe a 99% chance for the Austrians to accept to annexation. So I don't see why you'd ever say no to that free country. But hey, the Austrians want in. Good. I could use all the help I can get dealing with the remnants of uh, Mr. Mustache Man. Good, you can come up from the south. You can get some of the tank divisions out. They won't make much of an impact, but at least they can uh, drive around much quicker than the infantry can walk. So there's that. And using this method, the German Civil War is completely, utterly irrelevant. There is no fear of losing. It doesn't look pretty, but it works. It really works. And now that the armor is in the field, just look at them go. There we go. Cleaned up that mess nicely. Now, back to our focus tree. We will finish this focus and then we will head down to secure the new states and getting ourselves some free elections. Now, if at any time you were interested in gobbling up the United States, now is the time to do it. After we flip to the democratic regime, we will not be able to justify war goals. We can now, might as well do so. However, if we start down that path, we will have to take out the Allies. And let me tell you who the leader of the Allies is. Australia is the leader of the Allies. I could easily annex the United States, but I cannot bring myself to naval invade. Australia. I just don't want to. You can do this easily if you want to. It's it's perfectly doable. You should have some bases in the area, some islands that we stole off of the French or something. I think there's one here. I think there's another one here. Perfectly viable to hop into Australia and knock them out. I just don't want to do that right now. I really don't. So I will not be annexing the United States in this run. Oh, and time to put some uh, some swastika boys on trial. Bye-bye. Now is also a good time to start rebuilding the military. I'm going to hold on to my political power for now as well. Because to get down here... No, wait. To get down here, we'll need a little bit of democracy support. And 
Easiest way to get that is to hire an advisor. So that needs 150 PP and a focus, I believe. Where is he? Yes, that guy. We need two focuses, so I'll hold off for now. All right, time to secure the new state. Hey, 1941 tanks in 1938. Pretty cool, right? Let's start making them as well. And of course, no EU is complete without Spain. So uh, let's see if we can't integrate Spain into this glorious European Union. That's, uh, oh, that's Franco out of the picture. Bye bye. Oh, Spain is so weak right after their civil war. They've got nothing to stop me. And the European Union will truly be a European Union. Well, mostly. And that's Spain added to the collection. Yes, I realize that at this point puppeting is so much more efficient. I, I, I just want to own the land. Please. Please just let me have my fun. And yes, I realize that we don't have Portugal, Bulgaria or Poland added to the mix. That is quite simple. If we attack them, I think all three are non-aligned, I'm quite sure they are, they will join the Chinese United Front. And let's be honest, I really don't want to involve myself in that mess. Absolutely not. Bulwark against Bolshevism is done. And we do have the required democratic support for the monarchy compromise. This will flip us over to modern day Germany with the rather boring flag. I have to say, uh, Asia is looking spicy. That's a lot of fighting over China. That's a lot of fighting. Let's, let's not get involved. We have more important things to do. There we go. We are now plain old Germany with the rather plain old flag. But why would we ever want to be this plain old Germany with a plain old flag and this shriveled potato for a leader? Well, it's simple. And this gives us access to what is quite possibly the most powerful button in the game. Realize European unity. This can only be clicked by a democratic Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, Germany or Italy. So surprisingly, a fascist UK can also click this. This will give us a lot of core states in Europe. Just look at all those cores and look at that juicy juicy blue i present to you the european union 1939 glorious now as for our focus tree um a lot of it is locked out because well we we can't take this focus it can only be taken if we've caused less than 15 percent will tension and oh boy have we caused more than 15 percent will tension so we can never progress down this tree any farther than reverse the brain drain and we can dabble with the navel a bit and there's a few bits on this side we can still do so the game isn't over but there's no more good focuses out there for us everything we do from this point onwards has to be manually still though i think this is a very nice result it took a bit of cheese but i have to say i had fun now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's a little different from my usual approach. Don't worry, this isn't the direction I'm going to take the channel in. This was just me blowing off some steam. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like. Hit me up in the comment section with more suggestions for future videos. See some achievements in there, maybe some cool mods, maybe some good challenges. Either way, I will be there reading them. And of course, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload more content it really helps the channel out a lot if you didn't like it that's fine just press that dislike button and tell me what i did wrong always looking to learn and once again i want to put out a massive massive thank you to my patreon supporters thank you for making these videos possible love you guys and i will see you in the next video goodbye